Hello and welcome back for Psalm 50. Uh, Psalm 50 kind of continues the theme of Psalm 49 uh, or a portion of the theme of, of having our heart in the right place, uh, having our trust in the right place. In Psalm 49, it was with respect to worldly wealth, making sure we're not putting all our hope and trust in uh, being wealthy here and now. Uh, in Psalm 50, it has to do with our worship life. Uh, not just what we do perhaps on Sunday mornings, but also with the way that we live our lives. Um, and it opens up with verses that uh, kind of get God's people excited. Oh, judgment day is coming. Uh, and then, boom, verse 4 shatters any notion of, hey, uh, no need to evaluate what I'm doing. Uh, because verse 4 says, God's going to judge his people. Uh, and so we get a very strong warning that our worship life and the way that we live is not just going through the motions when it comes to worship or lip service when it comes to our confession uh, and our uh, asking for forgiveness. But before I talk a little bit more about that, let's just read through the psalm uh, so that we can have a little more of a foundation for the comments I'm going to make. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my consecrated ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of a goat from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. When you see a thief, you join with him. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You speak continually against your brother and slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and accuse you to your face. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with none to rescue. He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. Wow. Uh, verse 15, uh, well-known, perhaps something that you had for memory work uh, once upon a time. Uh, to call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Uh, falls in the middle of this psalm that's talking about empty worship, uh, empty praise of God. So this verse shows what God is actually looking for. Uh, people that come to worship, people that uh, brought their sacrifices, he didn't just want the sacrifices. He didn't need them. He says it right there. It's not like they were putting God in debt so that he had to do something for them. He didn't need them. It was a reminder to them that they needed him to forgive their sins. And so he reminds them, this is the attitude I want. I want you to call on me, to trust in me. Know that I will deliver you. And bring these out of thanks. And then as it continues on from verse 15, the other problem. So the first problem is really aimed at the, the attitude towards God uh, just in our relationship with him. Uh, we think that we can put him into debt. You know, I go to church. I give offerings to this and that. Well, God doesn't need that. And he's not mad at what you're doing per se. You know, he, he doesn't rebuke the sacrifices, the burnt offerings, he says. It's the attitude behind it that he has the problem with, that you think you're putting him in debt to him. Uh, or in debt to you, rather. And that then the other way that we uh, have a poor attitude is that when we turn Sunday into just an, an excuse 
for the rest of our week, right? What right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction. You cast my words behind you. And this is aimed at us when, when we perhaps have been tempted to or perhaps have outright done it, where we ask for forgiveness for something, we confess our sins, we get the forgiveness, and then we just go out and we keep doing the same thing as though it doesn't really matter. We're throwing God's instruction right behind us. And because maybe we don't suffer uh, a rebuke for that or a consequence for it, we think, well, God must be okay with it. He must be okay with this lip service that I'm giving to him. And so he gives us a very strong, strong warning. Consider this, you who forget God, I will tear you to pieces with none to rescue. Uh, so perhaps if Psalm 49 didn't uh, strike close to home because maybe we do have uh, a right relationship with worldly wealth, uh, this one certainly is cause to examine our hearts very closely and make sure that what we do and what we say uh, to God and about God is not just us going through the motions. Uh, we might be able to fool the rest of the world, uh, even those closest to us, but we're not going to fool God. Uh, so when we bring our offerings, bring them out of thanks. Bring them because we trust in God uh, to, to do what he has promised. When we go to worship, sing his praise, not because it's going to make him feel good and be more inclined to help us realize our, our potential and be our best version of ourselves now, uh, but rather because we know that he has already given his son to be our savior. Uh, so an important psalm for us to, to have in our repertoire uh, of readings to come back to, uh, along with many of these other psalms. But this one in particular uh, gives us a good opportunity to examine our heart. Where are we at uh, when it comes to our worship life and how we live our lives for God? And it sets the stage beautifully for Psalm 51. So hopefully I'll see you again for that one.